and a lady called Sarah Va Vauter in Switzerland said that John Halperin's conclusion from his uh, ALS paper from 1990 was not based on the evidence from his own paper. So his evidence was, it seems unlikely to us that infection with uh, Borrelia is a uh, uh, frequent cause of MND. MND is motor neuron disease or ALS. Even in patients who are seropositive for exposure, we believe this may often be coincidental. Now, a coincidence in science is uh, something that you can actually measure. Uh, science uh, uses 99% um, uh, probability. It uses probability because uh, nothing in science is ever decided uh, completely. So um, I'm going to get to the heart of this shortly. Anyway, uh, he got 9 of 19. Uh, uh, he, he got patients at random in Suffolk County, which is Long Island and New York. And um, so it's pa patients with motor neuron disease, and um, he tested them for Borrelia, and he got nine of nineteen were positive. And then he used uh, group two, a case control group. So this is um, a group to figure out what the background level of Borrelia in the population is. Now, he did one bad thing here. Subjects were drawn from a combination of sources, friends and relatives of patients, hospital employees and their friends, and uh, people who could walk at the university hospital, Stony Brook. So Stony Brook is on Long Island in um, New York, and it ha it's a hospital there, and it is in the middle of Suffolk County, or to one side of Suffolk County, and they have the high level of Lyme there. But here's the problem. Friends and relatives of patients. So um, you, you're taking the friends and relatives of your ALS people and that's kind of tough because um, you know John Hall of uh, Hall and Oates he, has, uh, he got Lyme disease and also his wife and stepchildren got Lyme disease. So friends and relatives, and, and much, much higher rate of Lyme than, than um, other people who are um, removed from them. Anyway, he got a 10.5% rate of Lyme. So uh, Sarah didn't do the math, and it seems no one else did it either. So I uh, worked myself up into doing it, and I'm just going to show you the math now and um, so this is a spreadsheet program and we're using 10.5 uh, percent as the background level and it looks complicated but and um, and I had a couple of mathematicians verify that it is actually the right way to do it and um, you're using uh, combinations of um, in this line here of uh, chances and you end up getting the probability of anything happening on this line here and this line here line M cumulative chance of this event this is just to make sure that my math is going okay and uh, let's see so you can see the 99 uh, uh, well, I won't do it that way. This uh, chance of no Lyme in the group was 12%. Chance of one patient. If, if, if Lyme or Borrelia is not associated with ALS, uh, uh, you got a 27% uh, chance of one patient. 28% chance of 2, 19 of 3. Now he got 9 of 19. So we go down to 9. And here's the probability of getting 9. It's 0.0047%. So it's pretty unlikely. And I have it here as a, a 1 over chance. So it's a 1 chance in 21,000 
of having nine patients with Lyme if Lyme and ALS are not associated. So I think his conclusion is incredible. Like, as a scientist, how could he come to the conclusion this is coincidental? Now, uh, we'll go get, let's get away from the 10.5% thing that he got. Uh, because uh, friends and relatives of patients is kind of a no-no anyway. So let's run away from that and we'll use the more realistic 5% uh, in this same spreadsheet. Uh, just get here. So I've, I've done this um, a bunch of different ways to check. Here's a realistic 5%, 9 of 19. And we'll just uh, click on it again. Okay, here we go. So, chance of no Lyme. Uh, now, we, we've changed the percentage. Uh, the background, we're concluding that uh, 1 in 20 people in that area uh, were positive for Lyme antibodies in their blood. So, mm -hmm. chance of no Lyme. Uh, 37%. Chance of 1, 37%. Chance of 2, 17. And we go down to chance of 5, uh, 0.17%. So we're already over 98%. Uh, or what is that? Uh, we're getting into the remote chances at 5. So we go down to 9, and it's the chance of getting 9 in a group uh, by random. So this is like throwing a dice, except that your dice has 20 sides instead of uh, instead of um, six. And you're looking for uh, all sixes or all ones or whatever, which you have to choose at the start of your throwing. Now, here we go. Chance of nine. Now this is, let's see, three, three, 9.2 million to one. So how on earth could this man say, uh, we believe this is often coincidental. You don't do that in science. You cannot do that in science. If you get uh, a result like this, you've got to go with it. You've got to explain it. You don't explain it with coincidence. You've got to explain it rationally. Now, I'm just going to bring up one more thing. So there's a guy with motor neuron or ALS who's well known and his name is Stephen Hawking has ALS or motor neuron disease. Now he doesn't have the, the normal version because he's still alive and he's been alive a long time. And most people die fairly quickly with it. But his father, uh, there is a Lyme connection. His father studied Borrelia bacteria in East Africa in the 1940s. So that's when Stephen was, uh, before he was born and uh, when he was a boy. So um, there is a very strong connection there. My conclusions uh, from reading that paper is that uh, there is a very, very clear association with uh, infection with uh, or antibodies to Borrelia burgdorferi and an illness that has similar symptoms to ALS or motor neuron disease. So it might be a different illness, but it looks the same as ALS. And unless you test for the Lyme antibodies, or unless you test for the actual Lyme bacteria by culture in the people, you're not going to know. And this is a matter of life and death, because there are um, treatments for Lyme disease and there's no treatment whatsoever for ALS. So if you just let this person linger they will die. Now the Stephen Hawking case shows that other Borrelia species that do not show up on the antibody test because the antibody the test is specifically for one version of Borrelia. There's maybe 20 or 30 different types of Borrelia out there and uh, so if you're testing for the wrong one, it's not even going to show up. 
So once again, you're going to have to, people are going to have to recognize that you're going to have to test for the bacteria uh, because the tests are not really valid if they only show up one particular species of whatever, 20 or 30 species that may be out there. Uh, point three is people are going to have to pay a lot more attention in math class, especially supposed scientists are going to have to spend uh, a little bit more time uh, on probabilities. And uh, number four, um, peer review is going to have to be a whole lot more rigorous than it has been. And um, it ca it, you can't just uh, put an opinion out, out there on the basis of uh, uh, a study uh, which uh, the findings of which you totally ignore and misdirection of research funds has taken place due to the conclusions in the paper people didn't bother uh, be skeptical about this paper and it passed peer review and that's been an uh, unmitigated disaster for people who had um, the disease that is similar to ALS because probably in the past 20 years people have died needlessly because they weren't treated uh, for a Lyme disease infection which was causing their symptoms and not only that but um, the whole treatment of Lyme disease has been uh, pretty um, wishy-washy for the last 20 years so I hope um, people start to sit up and notice and um, don't be afraid to review papers that are, are long since, um, uh, you know, they, don't, they shouldn't just become gospel because nobody reviewed them. And anyway, uh, there's my conclusions. Uh, thank you very much.